The variable specific impulse magnetic plasma rocket is an electromagnetic thruster for spacecraft propulsion. It uses radio waves to ionize and heat a propellant and magnetic fields to accelerate the resulting plasma to generate thrust. It is one of several types of spacecraft electric propulsion systems. The method of heating plasma used in VASIMR was originally developed as a result of research into nuclear fusion. VASIMR is intended to bridge the gap between high-thrust, low-specific impulse propulsion systems and low-thrust, high-specific impulse systems. VASIMR is capable of functioning in either mode. Costa Rican-born American scientist and former NASA astronaut Franklin Chang Diaz created the VASIMR concept and has been working on its development. Since 1977, VASIMR's units for development and test have been assembled by the Ad Astra Rocket Company, headquartered in the city of Houston, Texas, United States. Design and Operation The Variable Specific Impulse Magnetoplasma Rocket Sometimes referred to as the Electrothermal Plasma Thruster or Electrothermal Magnetoplasma Rocket, uses radio waves to ionize and heat propellant, which generates plasma that is accelerated using magnetic fields to generate thrust. This type of engine is electrodeless and as such belongs to the same electric propulsion family as the electrodeless plasma thruster, the microwave arc jet, or the pulsed inductive thruster class. It can also be seen as an electrodeless version of an arc jet, able to reach higher propellant temperature by limiting the heat flux from the plasma to the structure. Neither type of engine has any electrodes. This is advantageous in that it eliminates problems with electrode erosion that cause rival designs of ion thrusters to have relatively shorter life expectancy. Furthermore, since every part of a VASIMR engine is magnetically shielded and does not come into direct contact with plasma, the potential durability of this engine design is greater than other ion plasma engine designs. VASIMR can be most basically thought of as a convergent-divergent nozzle for ions and electrons. The propellant is first injected into a hollow cylinder surfaced with electromagnets. Upon entry into the engine, the gas is first heated to a cold plasma by a helicon RF antenna which bombards the gas with electromagnetic waves stripping electrons off the argon or xenon atoms and leaving plasma consisting of ions and loose electrons to continue down the engine compartment. By varying the amount of energy dedicated to RF heating and the amount of propellant delivered for plasma generation VASIMR is capable of generating either low thrust, high specific impulse exhaust or relatively high thrust, low specific impulse exhaust. The second phase is a strong electromagnet position to compress the ionized plasma in a similar fashion to a convergent-divergent nozzle that compresses gas in traditional rocket engines. A second coupler, known as the ion cyclotron heating section, emits electromagnetic waves in resonance with the orbits of ions and electrons as they travel through the engine. Resonance of the waves and plasma is achieved through a reduction of the magnetic field in this portion of the engine which slows down the orbital motion of the plasma particles. This section further heats the plasma to temperatures upwards of 1 million Kelvin, about 173 times the temperature of the sun's surface. Motion of ions and electrons through the engine can be approximated by lines parallel to the engine walls. However, the particles actually orbit those lines at the same time that they are traveling linearly through the engine. The final, diverging. Section of the engine contains a steadily expanding magnetic field which forces the ions and electrons into steadily lengthening spiral orbits in order to eject from the engine parallel and opposite to the direction of motion at speeds of up to 50,000 meters per second, propelling the rocket forward through space. Benefits and drawbacks of design in contrast with usual cyclotron resonance heating processes 
in VASIMR ions are immediately ejected through the magnetic nozzle, before they have time to achieve thermalized distribution. Based on novel theoretical work in 2004 by FEF and Bryce Manov at Austin, virtually all of the energy in the ion cyclotron wave is uniformly transferred to ionized plasma in a single pass cyclotron absorption process. This allows for ions to leave the magnetic nozzle with a very narrow energy distribution, and for significantly simplified and compact magnet arrangement in the engine. VASIMR does not use electrodes, instead, it magnetically shields plasma from most of the hardware parts, thus eliminating electrode erosion, a major source of wear and tear in ion engines. Compared to traditional rocket engines with very complex plumbing, high-performance valves, actuators and turbo pumps, VASIMR eliminates practically all moving parts from its design, maximizing its long-term durability. However, some new problems emerge, like interaction with strong magnetic fields and thermal management. The relatively large power at which VASIMR operates generates a lot of waste heat, which needs to be channeled away without creating thermal overload and undue thermal stress on materials used. Powerful superconducting electromagnets employed to contain hot plasma generate Tesla range magnetic fields. They can present problems with other onboard devices and also can produce unwanted torque by interacting with the magnetosphere. To counter this latter effect, the VF200 will consist of two 100 kW thruster units packaged together, with the magnetic field of each thruster oriented in opposite directions in order to make a zero-torque magnetic quadrupole. Research and Development the first VASIMR experiment was conducted at MIT starting in 1983 on the magnetic mirror plasma device. Important refinements were introduced to the rocket concept in 1990s, including the use of the Pelican plasma source, which replaced the initial plasma gun originally envisioned and made the rocket completely electrodeless, an extremely desirable feature to assure reliability and long life. A new patent was granted in 2002. In 1995, the Advanced Space Propulsion Laboratory was founded at NASA Johnson Space Center, Houston in the building of Sunny Carter Training Facility. The magnetic mirror device was brought from MIT. The first plasma experiment in Houston was conducted using a microwave plasma source. The collaboration with University of Houston, University of Texas at Austin, Rice University and other academic institutions was established. In 1998, the first helicon plasma experiment was performed at the ASPL. The decision was made regarding the official name of VASIMR and VASIMR experiment. VX-10 in 1998 ran up to 10 kW helicon discharge, VX-25 in 2002 ran up to 25 kW and VX-50, up to 50 kW of RF plasma discharge. In March 2000, the VASIMR group was given a Rotary National Award for Space Achievement, Stellar Award. By 2005 major breakthroughs were obtained at the ASPL including full and efficient plasma production, and acceleration of the plasma ions in the second stage of the rocket. The VASIMR engine model VX50 proved to be capable of 0.5 newtons of thrust. Published data on the VX50 engine, capable of processing 50 kilowatts of total radio frequency power, showed ICRF efficiency to be 59%, calculated as 90% NAR coupling efficiency times 65% NB ion speed boosting efficiency. It was hoped that the overall efficiency of the engine could be increased by scaling up power levels. Ad Astra Rocket Company was incorporated in Delaware on January 14, 2005. On June 23, 2005, Ad Astra and NASA signed the first Space Act agreement to privatize the VASIMR technology. On July 8, 2005, Franklin Chang Diaz retired from NASA after 25 years of service.
Ad Astra's board of directors was formed and Dr. Diaz took the helm as chairman and CEO on July 15, 2005. In July 2006, AARC opened the Costa Rica subsidiary in the city of Liberia at the campus of Earth University. In December 2006, AARC Costa Rica performed first plasma experiment on the VXCR device utilizing helicon ionization of argon. The 100 kW VASIMR experiment was successfully running by 2007 and demonstrated efficient plasma production with an ionization cost below 100 EV. VX100 plasma output was tripled over the prior record of the VX50. In the same year, the AARC moved out from the NASA facility to its own building in Webster, TX. Model VX100 was expected to have the NBI on speed boosting efficiency of 80%. There were, however, additional efficiency losses related to the conversion of DC electric current to radio frequency power and also to the superconducting magnets, auxiliary equipment energy consumption. By comparison, 2009 state-of-the-art, proven ion engine designs such as NASA's HIPEP operated at 80% total thruster PPU energy efficiency. Development of the 200 kW engine on October 24, 2008 The company announced that the plasma generation aspect of the VX200 engine, Helicon first stage or solid state high frequency power, transmitter, had reached operational status. The key enabling technology, solid state DCRF power processing, has become very efficient reaching up to 98% efficiency. The helicon discharge uses 30 kilowatts of radio waves to turn argon gas into plasma. The remaining 170 kilowatts of power is allocated for passing energy to and acceleration of plasma in the second part of the engine via ion cyclotron resonance heating. Based on data released from previous VX100 testing, it was expected that the VX200 engine would have a system efficiency of 60 to 65 percent and thrust level of 5N. Optimal specific impulse appeared to be around 5000S using low-cost argon propellant. One of the remaining untested issues was potential versus actual thrust, that is, whether the hot plasma actually detached from the rocket. Another issue is waste heat management. About 60% of input energy ends up as useful kinetic energy. A large portion of the remaining 40% will be secondary ionizations caused from plasma crossing magnetic field lines and exhaust divergence. A significant portion of that 40% would end up as waste heat. Managing and rejecting that waste heat is critical to allowing for continuous operation of the VASIMR engine. Between April and September 2009, tests were performed on the VX200 prototype with fully integrated two Tesla superconducting magnets. They successfully expanded the power range of the VASIMR up to its full operational capability of 200 kilowatts. During November 2010, long duration, full power firing tests were performed with the VX200 engine reaching the steady state operation for 25 seconds thus validating basic design. Characteristics Results presented to NASA and Academia in January 2011 have confirmed that the design point for optimal efficiency on the VX200 is 50 km per second exhaust velocity or an ISP of 5000 S. Based on these data, thruster efficiency of 72% has been achieved by Ad Astra, yielding an overall system efficiency of 60% with argon as the propellant. The 200 kW VX200 had executed more than 10,000 engine firings by 2013. While demonstrating greater than 70% thruster efficiency relative to RF power input with argon propellant at full power, potential testing on the International Space Station on December 8, 2008. 
Ad Astra signed an agreement with NASA to arrange the placement and testing of a flight version of the VASIMR, the VF-200, on the International Space Station, but the plan was scrapped in 2015. In early 2009, the earliest possible launch date was reported as 2012. As of April 2014, update, its launch was anticipated to be in 2016. The reason for the delays in the project were attributed to funding, and in June 2014, Franklin Chang Diaz stated that the project would be unlikely to proceed unless Ad Astra were to receive Space Act Agreement funds from NASA. Since the available power from the ISS is less than 200 kilowatts, the ISS VASIMR will include a trickle-charged battery system allowing for 15 min pulses of thrust. Testing of the engine on the ISS is valuable because it orbits at a relatively low altitude and experiences fairly high levels of atmospheric drag, making periodic boosts of altitude necessary. Currently, altitude reboosting by chemical rockets fulfills this requirement. The VASIMR test on the ISS may lead to a capability of maintaining the ISS or a similar space station in a stable orbit at 1 20th of the approximately $210 million per year present estimated cost. Ad Astra held a formal PDR for the VF-200 with NASA on 26 June 2013. The plans were later scrapped in March 2015. VF-200 The VF-200 flight rated thruster consists of two 100 kW VASIMR units with opposite magnetic dipoles so that no net rotational torque is applied to the space station when the thruster magnets are working. The VF-200-1 is the first flight unit and was slated to be tested in space attached to the ISS. Then, the plans were scrapped in March 2015. NASA partnership in June 2005, Ad Astra signed its first Space Act agreement with NASA which led to the development of the VASIMR engine. In December 10, 2007, AARC and NASA signed an Umbrella Space Act agreement relating to the space agency potential interest in the VASIMR providing a framework for collaboration between the parties, setting out the general conditions governing aspects of their ongoing relationship. In December 8, 2008, NASA and AARC entered into a Space Act agreement that could lead to conducting a space flight test of the VASIMR on the ISS. In March 2, 2011, Ad Astra and NASA Johnson Space Center have signed a support agreement to collaborate on research, analysis and development tasks on space-based cryogenic magnet operations and electric propulsion systems currently under development by Ad Astra. As of February 2011, update, NASA had 100 people assigned to the project to work with Ad Astra to integrate the VF-200 onto the space station. On December 16, 2013, AARC and NASA signed another five-year Umbrella Space Act agreement, VX200SS in March 2015. Ad Astra announced having won a $10 million award from NASA to further advance the technology readiness of the VASIMR engine. The VX200SS to meet the needs of a variety of deep space mission concepts.